What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Roman Reigns is now a part timer in WWE. Money in the Bank ruined. Real reason. Uh, Charlotte Flair lost another wrestling news. Now we got to talk about the whole Roman Reigns situation. If you guys have been hitting me up and letting me know. I've seen on Instagram and Twitter of uh, basically Roman at a, uh, a house show before uh, WrestleMania Backlash. And him pretty much, you know, being honest with the crowd, saying this may be one of the last times they see him at this arena or whatnot. And, uh, you know, he may be moving on to other uh, other things, you know, maybe potentially going to Hollywood. Who knows? But, you know, he's just been kind of alluding that this may be his last go around or whatnot. And um, apparently now uh, Roman has released an Instagram clip where he was basically talking about this is literally today before I started recording this video talking about what if this is the last time you see him in a six man tag what is the last time you see them together in a six man tag and he's just kind of planting them seeds so it's it's just it's really one of those things where it's like I'm probably going to have a little conversation after this video to dive more in deep deep into where I think you know things could be possibly heading but it looks like maybe he signed a new deal a new contract but it may be a part-time contract we will see how things plan out but let's get right into this appreciate all love and support man and let's do the damn thing what is going on guys it is wrestlemania here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including bad news as roman reigns is becoming a part-timer as he signed a new part-time deal with wwe mm. wwe about to ruin money in the bank the real reason why charlotte flair was written off tv wwe recycling crowd footage and uh -oh. much more be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and our non-wrestling channel, Incredible. But now let's hit the intro and get straight into our first story. This should be a good one, man. Our first story looks at a bit of bad news as Roman Reigns is now becoming a part-timer. Atopping today's news is a major story concerning Roman Reigns and his future in the WWE. This is good news for Roman Reigns and bad news for us, mm -hmm. as a tribal chief has reportedly signed a new deal that WWE calls for him to work less dates. With Reigns holding the WWE and Universal Championships, which means the WWE Universe will see less title defenses, which again raises the question why Roman has both belts, this story followed rumors that Reigns might be taking off time from the WWE, something Dave Meltzer discussed on a recent Wrestling Observer Radio. It's not it for him, but the situation is that he got a new deal and a new deal is for far less dates. So he's not going to be doing, I don't know how many house shows he'll be doing, but he's going to be doing far less house shows than he's doing now. Mm. The new deal just shows how much the WWE values Roman Reigns, but it also poses the question whether the WWE has created another absentee champion like Brock Lesnar, mm. i.e. one who makes limited appearances and limited title defenses. One of the advantages of putting the Universal Championship on Reigns was that the fans got to see him defend the title more often than Lesnar did during his this heel run. True. For years, fans have complained about Lesnar rarely defending the title, which raised the question whether the title had any significance. Up until recently, Reigns was a fixture on SmackDown with title defenses on the blue brand as well as the WWE's premium events. However, that hasn't been so since Reigns unified the WWE Universal Championships. If Roman Reigns is working a limited schedule, it's downright baffling why the WWE opted to unify the belts as fans on Raw and SmackDown could see less of the world titles than they have in a long time. While some WWE defenders might argue that the limited title defenses will make the world title more prestigious, that wasn't the case when Brock Lesnar held the title and this there's no true. reason to think it will change with Reigns. Some might argue Reigns' absence will give the WWE's undercard more opportunities in the spotlight, but this will be a dramatic shift from the way the WWE has handled its undercard, especially in light of the promotion's continued failure to build new stars. As many fans have argued, Roman's title unification presents an excellent opportunity to elevate the Intercontinental and United States Championships since the world title is likely going to be absent from television. Obviously, the WWE's failure to include either belt on WrestleMania Backlash Premium yep. Event suggests the secondary belts won't be utilized any more than they already are. What do you think of Reigns working less dates? Let us know in the comments down below. This is, uh, uh, it's one of those scenes where it's like, The writing was on the wall. I'm going to talk about this whole Roman Reigns situation after the video because I have some things to get off my chest. I know we want to finish the rest of this video, but I'm going to give my deep dive into this. because I've been wanting to talk about this all weekend. So 
if you guys are wanting to stay around till a little bit after reaction, uh, the reaction part to hear my takes on certain things, definitely stay around. Next up, WWE about to ruin Money in the oh Bank. Oh boy, Is WWE go. changing the stipulation for its Money in the Bank ladder match? Well, fans are asking this after Cody Rhodes appeared in a hype video for July's Money in the Bank premium event, making comments that some fans suggest that will drastically alter the way the WWE briefcase works. Hmm? As every member of the universe knows, the briefcase winner has traditionally received an open contract that they can cash in at any time to receive a world championship match within a year of winning the briefcase. This has led to some exciting situations yes, when wrestlers have opted to cash in the briefcase after a world champion has wrestled a hellacious match, often leading to an easy win. It's also led to wrestlers not booked as main event caliber talent receiving the chance to challenge for a world title. Wrestling News' Paul Davis analyzed Cody's comments, noting, During the commercial that aired tonight, Cody Rhodes stated that one lucky male and female superstar will win the chance to main event WrestleMania. If so, this would eliminate what? the briefcases anytime and anywhere provision, taking away a considerable deal of suspense. If the WWE abandons this wildcard element, how will it handle things? Well, Davis speculated, one possibility is that the men's Money in the Bank winner would challenge for the WWE Championship, for example. Then the men's Rumble winner would challenge for the Universal Championship. The women's Money in the Bank winner would challenge for the Raw Women's title at Mania, for example. The women's Rumble winner would challenge for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Basically, the Rumble winners would no longer be picking which champion they want to face. Oh. This would be a major change to the briefcase stipulation, but the WWE may feel it's necessary as some fans feel the stipulation hasn't been properly utilized for several years. The Money in the Bank match began in 2005, and while it's led to some explosive moments in history, the last few years have featured largely lackluster cash-ins. But do you think WWE will ruin Money in the Bank this way? Let us know in the comments oh, down below. Oh, no, I can definitely see them doing that. No. I'm not a big fan of that. The, the money in the bank match and stipulation is not the problem. I think that's pretty cool. The problem is the booking of it and who they either have win, when they have them cash in. That's that's where the problem comes into play. That's, that's really what it is. And if they're going to book that person strongly to be the next guy like or the next woman, that's the only issue. I think the Royal Rumble should stay what it is. It, 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 it creates intrigue because you don't know who they're going to face. Hey, do I want to face this person? Do I want to face this person? But now if the Royal Rumble winner wins, they'll be facing a, a specific brand champion. I like, I like that unpredictableness. That's what made the Royal Rumble what it was, man. I mean, that's what makes it what it is. He gets to decide who he faces. I like that. That's what makes it fun. You never know who's going to get picked. You know what I'm saying? Or you kind of have an idea, but it could be a swerve. And then money in the bank, it just keeps you on suspense because you just don't know when they're going to cash in. I think they just need to keep it the same, but just book it better. Book whoever wins the money in the bank to be someone that legitimately is going to be the next guy up. Like, let's not give, for example, they gave the damn money in the bank to Brock Lesnar. Y'all remember that? I was just like, why? Brock Lesnar is one of the few people that doesn't even need the money in the bank to really get a title after. Why? 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 Come on now. Somebody. T All right, man. We'll see. But I, 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 I do see WWE doing this. Next up, the reason Charlotte Flair was written off television. Well, what's the reason for Charlotte Flair's kayfabe injury at WrestleMania Backlash? Well, the WWE has reported that Charlotte Flair suffered a fractal radial during her I Quit match against Ronda Rousey, leading to talk that the Queen will be taking time off from the WWE. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a number of possible reasons for Flair's sabbatical, but Wrestling Observer Figure 4 Online's Brian Alvarez believes he has the answer and discussed them on The Brian and Vinny Show. They claim that her radius is broken. I'm pretty sure that this whole thing was a way to write Charlotte off television for quite a Which while. I, I so Ronda won the title and Charlotte's gonna get married. Mm. Wrestling News' Paul Davis discussed Flair's past remarks about her upcoming marriage to former superstar Andrade, saying, Flair recently revealed to BT Sports' Ariel Helwani that her wedding is set for this summer. With Charlotte apparently taking time off, okay. though, fans are curious about who Ronda's next opponent will be as she defends the SmackDown Women's Championship. With rumors of Bayley returning soon, I was saying that I would love it to be Bailey. That would be the perfect heel for her to face. And the talk that Lacey Evans will be working as a heel, Rousey has two potential opponents. There's also the possibility that Shayna Baszler might step up and challenge Ronda Rousey. Which I would There's be okay with. There's also the possibility with. of the baby faces such as Naomi and Sasha Banks challenging for the belt with heel turns possible or the WWE opting to run a face versus face match. Who do you think Ronda should defend? I would love it to be Shayna Baszler. 
if they book Shayna Baszler, like how Shayna Baszler should be booked, I would love that. That would be interesting. Shayna Baszler, Ronda, they have some history. That that would be, I'm not going to lie to you, that would be fun. That would actually be really fun. Comment down below, if, let me know if you guys think that would, it, granted it would be like a combination of UFC, WWE, but I think they can make it work. They know each other. I think they could definitely make this work. I think that would be cool. Ronda, Shayna Baszler, go at it. Maybe make it a two-match, maybe a three-match series. If they could draw it out correctly, I would love to see it, honestly. Defend the SmackDown Women's Championship against? Let us know in the comments down below. Next up, Cody Rhodes sets sight on championship. Like Rhodes seems ready to challenge Roman Reigns for the Undisputed yep. Championship. It's now that he's earned his second straight win against Seth Rollins. Rhodes spoke after Backlash about what's next for him, saying, I said it at the end. I did the generic symbol for what I want the belt. I want the title because it's real. That's what I want. And to be able to get two on him, I think we can walk away from this one. Cody praised Rollins as an opponent, but made it clear he's ready to move on. I really think Seth's an amazing, amazing superstar slash wrestler. I absolutely do. I can't wait to see what he'll do next. He's been to the top of the mountain. He's kicked my face in, just beat me helped to death, but not actually beat me. So what he does now, good luck. Absolutely good luck. I'm moving forward. I'm moving on. I'm very excited to see what that is. Maybe the WWE fans, the WWE Universe, pro wrestling fans, whatever we're saying, they can tell me, but I'm looking forward to it. While Cody may feel he's finished with Seth, we wouldn't be surprised if the two clash one more time at yep, Hell in a Cell. It's going to happen. Next up, WWE. This is going to happen. The way that match ended with <laughs> Cody basically cheating. He out-cheated Seth Rollins. It's going to happen one more time at Hell in a Cell. I don't know if it's going to be a Hell in a Cell match. I'm not sure if the few warrants it, unless it gets a little bit personal. They actually have plenty of time because the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view is not until June 5th, I believe. Something like that. Uh, it's it's early in June. I think the first weekend in June. So they have plenty of time to build towards this. But, um, yeah, it's going to happen one more time. And Seth will lose 3-0 to him because it just needs to end that way. It doesn't. Cody doesn't need to take a loss here. You need to build him up as a credible threat. Build, keep building him up. Keep having him beat noticeable people, former champions, to get to Roman. And then you start calling out Roman. Like, hey, bro, my time is now. And have him, oh, my God, have him put the title on the line, the WWE Championship. You can still have him be the Universal Champion. Oh, I can't, oh, I'm getting goosebumps because I, I, I hope they do this correctly. WWE recycling crowd footage. Is the WWE having trouble finding the right reaction from its live crowds? Uh -oh. Perhaps the reason why WWE's production team is reportedly recycling footage of the WWE Universe from past events. As Wrestling News is reporting, during the Madcap Moss Corbin video recap, WWE used crowd shots from 2012 from John Cena's return as the Doctor of Thugonomics. Oh, no. They've been doing more of this lately. Now, as fans who have attended WWE live events know, the WWE tells fans in attendance that their likeness can be used in any WWE production. While some fans may think this is for home video or WWE network presentations, it appears that WWE is looking to get stock footage for its crowd. This could be used in any number of ways, including making a sparsely attended event look full or getting mm -hmm. the right reaction when WWE wants to show the fans. Mm -hmm. This also reflects Mr. McMahon's ever-growing desire to control every aspect of the WWE product. And finally, Becky Lynch. Yep, this, this definitely sounds about right in the sense of how Vince operates. You know, I could see them definitely in a promo package using uh, some footage that doesn't even relate to what just happened. That's, that's WWE for you. They... Granted, they are great at their video production packages, probably the best to ever do it in the business. But sometimes, I guess they do situations like that, which I'm, I don't feel like it's necessary, but hey, I don't run a billion dollar company, so. Trash talks Bianca Belair. And last but not least, Becky Lynch took a cheap shot at current Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair on Twitter, saying, when I was champ, my title was defended on every pay-per-view. While the former Raw Women's wow. Champion is naturally playing up her heel <laughs> big-time Bex persona, there's little if anything to be gained from Lynch making a comment like this as Belair's backlash absence is due to the WWE's decision to forego any championship matches, save for the SmackDown Women's Championship clash between Flair and Rousey. Yeah. While social media can be a good venue for advancing storylines, this is an example of how the WWE needs to keep a closer eye on its superstars' posts. But there you have it, folks. The yeah. wildest news stories in rumors. That's the situation where it's like, one, she didn't need to be on there. That would have been an extra match that didn't need to happen. And then, uh, two, uh, it's just like, 
the show was good where it was at. I'm sure Bianca will probably defend it at Hell in a Cell. Show was good with that, but I get it. She's just healing it up. So, but all right. I need to get into my whole thoughts and opinions on the whole Roman Reigns situation. We know that he was, you know, at a house show talking about potentially leaving. Now, uh, apparently, he may have signed a new contract with less states. This is a situation. The writing was on the wall that WWE. I don't know if they prepared for this. I doubt that they prepared for this, but we knew at some point. Roman is not going to be the full-time guy anymore. He's been full-time action for the past two to three years since he came back from the whole COVID situation. So it's like, at some point, you got to start building new stars. This is all on WWE. This is all on them. And guess what? He can demand less dates because he's fucking Roman Reigns. He's literally carrying this company on his back. So he can do that. If he wants to venture out and start doing other things, guess what? He can do that. It's your job, Vince McMahon and everyone in creative, to create new stars or potentially new individuals that we can get behind. All the talent that they ended up letting go could have been new stars they've been, they could have been building, but they let them go. They let them go. The stars you have now, they could be something, but you got to build them. You got to build them up. Because once Roman starts phasing himself out of main events and shows and appearances, what are you going to do? Who's going to be the guy next? He's single-handedly one of the only reasons to watch SmackDown, really. He is. Those are the only segments I really honestly watch. Because everyone else is kind of, it's like afterthoughts, honestly. So it's like, what are you going to do, WWE? This is all on them. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do because I don't think they have put in any type of plan to really have someone be the next star. Yes, some people are saying, oh, they, they want Austin Theory to be that person, but that's going to take some time. That's going to take some time. Winning the United States Championship is cool, but it's still going to take a lot more time for him to get to that point. And Cody's not a new star. He's been in WWE before. You know what I'm saying? So I can't consider him a new star. He has a new, fresh life to his character in WWE, but he's not a new star. So honestly, you got to really find out who, what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? They could possibly push Walter. I'm still not calling him Gunther. They could possibly push him. Push him correctly. I know a lot of people saying Brian Breaker. Possibly. But I don't trust anything they do with NXT to bring to the main roster for it to make sense because they have a, a bad reputation of that. There's people that they could push. It's just they got to be willing to do it. Will they be on the level of Roman Reigns? Who knows? It just depends. But they need to start making... Well, they should have been making plans because now Roman literally can literally do whatever he wants. What are they going to do? If he wants to chill, guess what? He's going to chill. They got to figure out something. This is all on Vince and creative. So they don't get no sympathy me on, sympathy from me on that level because they should have known we got to find the next guy. We don't have the next guy. When this guy leaves, what are we going to do? They've been fortunate. When Stone Cold and The Rock left, that's when they start trans transitioning into John Cena. They knew John Cena and like Brock Lesnar, they were going to be their guys. But then Brock Lesnar ended up leaving. Guess what? John Cena stayed. It was going to be, they, he, they knew he was going to be the guy, the man. As John Cena started to fade out, we started seeing what they wanted to do with Roman to be the next guy. It didn't work because, and, you know, crowd saw right through it. It wasn't until he turned heel. That's when he began, became the guy. And there's been great people like Seth Rollins. Fantastic. Definitely had his moments of carrying the company on his back. He has been the guy for, uh, you know, especially during the, the face run of Roman Reigns. He was the guy for WWE. There's no doubt about no doubt about that. But next level superstar, we knew it was gonna, they wanted to be Roman. They just needed it to let it happen organically. And it did. And they got what they wanted. And this is all what they wanted for years. This is what they wanted. But they just focused on it. And didn't focus on everyone else they need to build up. So when he's done and they need someone else to be the guy, 
who else are they going to have? So, comment down below. Let me know, man. What's your thoughts and opinions on Roman Reigns getting less dates on his potentially new contract? And who do they have as the next guy up when Roman ultimately decides to, to hang it up? Who do you think will be the next guy for WWE? Or do they just not have one, someone that that could potentially be that next superstar for them? But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 80K. We're like literally right there. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all in the next one. Peace.